David Beckham's Netflix documentary was great, but we think that they should have had one episode dedicated to his hair. This man went through many different hairstyles before finding the perfect one, and they all didn't feature. Come on! But guess what? His cornrows and mohawk aren't the only things the series didn't touch on. Here are 10 things Netflix's David Beckham documentary leaves out. Firstly, they failed to dig deep into his infidelity. They touched on the rumours that were said by the media and how it affected the Beckhams, but they carefully avoided the story itself. Well, here's what happened. After Beckham moved to Real Madrid in 2003, he hired a woman in her mid-twenties named Rebecca Luz to be his personal assistant. Then boom! In April 2004, Luz went to the News of the World and confessed to having had a four-month affair with the footballer. Beckham said that her claims were ludicrous, but guess what? He never took legal action against her. One would have expected the documentary to cover that aspect of his life, but you can understand why it didn't. There are a few other things about his family the documentary left out, but we'll come to that later. For now, we're wondering why the documentary said nothing about Beckham's acting career. They talked about his modelling and appearance in commercials, but failed to add that he featured in a few movies back in the day. Come on! He appeared in the British movie Goal and its sequel Goal 2 Living the Dream. He also made appearances in non-football related movies like The Man from Uncle and King Arthur Legend of the Swords. There were even rumours that Beckham would feature in the final season of Peaky Blinders after he visited the set, but he ended up not making any appearance. But you know where he actually made an appearance? Deadpool 2. Yeah, it was only a promotional trailer, but it counts, doesn't it? Moving on though, the documentary properly talked about his iconic free kick against Greece that sent England to the 2002 World Cup and turned him from villain to hero. But the producers left out the injury that nearly kept him out of that tournament. The tournament was scheduled to start in May, but in April 2002, Beckham broke his leg and that kept him out for more than six weeks. He was so close to being left out, but he recovered just four days before kickoff of the tournament. In fact, he wasn't 100% when he played that game against Argentina, and if the documentary could show him scoring the revenge-winning goal, then they could have shown the injury which nearly stopped him from having that moment. Speaking of the World Cup, the documentary failed to state that the midfielder missed the 2010 tournament. As was documented in the series, Fabio Capello told Beckham that if he wanted to make the World Cup squad, he had to be playing in a top league. And that's why Beckham went on two loan spells to Milan in 2009 and 2010. He was very much involved in the qualifiers and was going to be a sure pick for the tournament, but he ruptured his Achilles tendon in March 2010, and that sidelined him for six months, effectively ruling him out of the World Cup that summer. But for real, if you talk about him preparing for the World Cup, you might as well include that he eventually didn't make it to the tournament. Also, the whole Inter Miami phase of his life looked like an afterthought. If you didn't know the story before, the documentary would have you thinking that Beckham buying an MLS club was easy peasy but it actually wasn't. The documentary left out details of how difficult it was for him to get the club up and running. The hope was for the club to start playing in 2016 or 2017, but it kept getting pushed back because there were a lot of delays with securing funding and completing a stadium deal. Because of all these delays, Inter Miami didn't start playing until 2020. That's a delay of three to four years. From that alone, you can imagine how much detail the documentary left out. But to be fair, if they were to go into detail about how Inter Miami was really founded, that would be a separate documentary all on its own. But they surely could have added how David Beckham managed to convince Messi to move to Inter Miami. The dinner conversation with co-owner Jorge Mas. The flight to Barcelona in 2019 to try and get Messi's dad on board. Sneaking into a hotel in Barcelona to make his intentions known. All that would have been great for the documentary, don't you think? Now, remember we said that there were more things about his family that were left out? Well, here's one. David Beckham and his dad Ted were not always as cordial as the documentary made it seem. Ted was a very tough man who was obsessed with Manchester United. That was emphasised in the documentary, but much wasn't said about how badly their relationship deteriorated after David decided to leave Manchester United and move to Spain in 2003. Ted loved Manchester United so much and could not imagine his son playing for another club. 
He tried to stop the move, but when he couldn't, they fell out. He said it felt like he had lost his son. The pair reportedly didn't talk to each other for years and only communicated via their lawyers. This wasn't documented in the series. They also didn't talk about the divorce between Ted and Sandra, and how Ted said in his book that David's fame was one of the reasons they split. Pretty crazy, right? Honestly, you can see why they left these bits out. Another part of his family that was left out was his sisters. While his parents and his wife were major parts of this documentary, his sisters were left out completely. They were neither interviewed nor even mentioned. Beckham always made it known that family means a lot to him, so it would have been nice to hear from his sisters. We believe that they would have brought a whole new perspective to his growing up story. But, well, we believe that there had to be a good reason for leaving them out. But we doubt there's a good enough reason to leave Steve McManaman out of the documentary completely. You see, McManaman was the first player to move from the Premier League to Real Madrid and was the only Englishman in the squad when Beckham made that move in 2003. So, now Naturally, it was Steve who helped David settle in and, very importantly, helped with the language. When Real Madrid wanted to release McManaman, Beckham begged the management to let him stay, but his plea changed nothing. Their minds were already made up. All of this should certainly have been told in the documentary. They talked about how hard it was for Beckham to settle in, having no friends and all that, but the one man who helped him settle in was excluded. That just felt weird, to be honest. Why was that part left out? It surely couldn't have been because he played for United's biggest rivals, Liverpool and City. Certainly not. But this last one, well, we know why they left it out, for sure. David Beckham claims he never stopped loving Manchester United, and we have no doubts about that. Towards the end of the documentary, his second son, Romeo, who is an Arsenal fan, teased him about the Gunners and he had a pretty interesting reaction to him. That was certainly cute, but they intentionally left out the part where David Beckham trained with Arsenal in 2008. But this time, he had already moved to the MLS and it was the off-season, so in order to stay in shape, he had to continue training. One would have naturally expected him to immediately go to Manchester, but he was probably avoiding an interaction with Fergie, so he went and trained with Arsenal instead. Who knows, that was probably when Romeo was turned into a gunner. He was only five years old at the time, who knows what the turning point for him was. We should also add that all three of Beckham's sons played for Arsenal at one point or another. The documentary also conveniently left that out. Interesting, isn't it? But hey, we're not taking anything away from the documentary. It was great right? What do you think about it? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!